Charles VII, the 22nd of February 1403 to the 22nd of July 1461, called the Victorious (French: Le Victorio) or the Well-Served (French: Le Bien Servi), was King of France from 1422 to his death in 1461, the fifth from the House of Valois. In the midst of the Hundred Years' War, Charles VII inherited the throne of France under desperate circumstances. Forces of the Kingdom of England and the Duchy of Burgundy occupied Guyenne and northern France, including Paris, the most populous city, and Reims, the city in which the French kings were traditionally crowned. In addition, his father Charles VI had disinherited him in 1420 and recognised Henry V of England and his heirs as the legitimate successors to the French crown instead. At the same time, a civil war raged in France between the Armagnacs, supporters of the House of Valois, and the Burgundian party, supporters of the House of Valois Burgundy allied to the English. With his court removed to Borges, south of the Loire River, Charles was disparagingly called the King of Borges because the area around this city was one of the few remaining regions left to him. However, his political and military position improved dramatically with the emergence of Joan of Arc as a spiritual leader in France. Joan of Arc and other charismatic figures led French troops to lift the siege of Orléans, as well as other strategic cities on the Loire River, and to crush the English at the Battle of Pâté. With the local English troops dispersed, the people of Reims switched allegiance and opened their gates, which enabled the coronation of Charles VII in 1429 at Reims Cathedral. This long-awaited event boosted French morale as hostilities with England resumed. Following the Battle of Castillon in 1453, the French had expelled the English from all their continental possessions except for the Pale of Calais. The last years of Charles VII were marked by conflicts with his turbulent son, the future Louis XI of France. Biography <inaudible> 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 Early life Born at the Hôtel Saint-Paul, the royal residence in Paris, Charles was given the title of Comte de Ponthou at his birth in 1403. He was the eleventh child and fifth son of Charles VI of France and Isabeau of Bavaria. His four elder brothers, Charles 1386, Charles 1392 to 1401, Louis 1397 to 1415, and John 1398 to 1417, had each held the title of Dauphin of France, heir to the French throne in turn. All died childless, leaving Charles with a rich inheritance of titles. Topic: <laughs> Dauphin Almost immediately after his accession to the title of Dauphin, Charles had to face threats to his inheritance, and he was forced to flee from Paris on 29 May 1418 after the partisans of John the Fearless, Duke of Burgundy, had entered the city the previous night. By 1419, Charles had established his own court in Borges and a parliament in Poitiers. On the 11th of July of that same year, Charles and John the Fearless attempted a reconciliation by signing, on a small bridge near puyet le fort not far from Melun where Charles was staying, the Treaty of puyet le fort known also under name of Pays du Ponceau Ponceau from French Pont. Bridge is a small one-span bridge thrown over a stream. They also decided that a further meeting should take place the following 10 September. On that date, they met on the bridge at Montereau. The Duke assumed that the meeting would be entirely peaceful and diplomatic, thus he brought only a small escort with him. The Dauphin's men reacted to the Duke's arrival by attacking and killing him. Charles's level of involvement has remained uncertain to this day. Although he claimed to have been unaware of his men's intentions, this was considered unlikely by those who heard of the murder. The assassination marked the end of any attempt of a reconciliation between the two factions Armagnacs and Burgundians, thus playing into the hands of Henry V of England. Charles was later required by a treaty with Philip the Good, the son of John the Fearless, to pay penance for the murder, which he never did. <laughs> treaty of Troyes the 21st of May 1420. At the death of his father, Charles VI, the succession was cast into doubt. 
The Treaty of Troyes, signed by Charles VI in 1420, mandated that the throne pass to the infant King Henry VI of England, the son of the recently deceased Henry V and Catherine of Valois, daughter of Charles VI. However, Frenchmen loyal to the King of France regarded the treaty as invalid on grounds of coercion and Charles VI's diminished mental capacity. For those who did not recognize the treaty and believed the Dauphin Charles to be of legitimate birth, he was considered to be the rightful heir to the throne. For those who did not recognize his legitimacy, the rightful heir was recognized as Charles, Duke of Orléans, cousin of the Dauphin, who was in English captivity. Only the supporters of Henry VI and the Dauphin Charles were able to enlist sufficient military force to press effectively for their candidates. The English, already in control of northern France, were able to enforce the claim of their king in the regions of France that they occupied. Northern France, including Paris, was thus ruled by an English regent, Henry V's brother, John of Lancaster, 1st Duke of Bedford, based in Normandy see Dual Monarchy of England and France. <laughs> king of Borges In his adolescent years, Charles was noted for his bravery and flamboyant style of leadership. At one point after becoming Dauphin, he led an army against the English dressed in the red, white, and blue that represented his family. His heraldic device was a mailed fist clutching a naked sword. However, in July 1421, upon learning that Henry V was preparing from Mance to attack with a much larger army, he withdrew from the siege of Chartres in order to avoid defeat. He then went south of the Loire River under the protection of Yolanda of Aragon, known as Queen of the Four Kingdoms, and, on the 22nd of April 1422, married her daughter, Marie of Anjou, to whom he had been engaged since December 1413 in a ceremony at the Louvre Palace. Charles, unsurprisingly, claimed the title King of France for himself, but he failed to make any attempts to expel the English from northern France out of indecision and a sense of hopelessness instead. He remained south of the Loire River, where he was still able to exert power, and maintained an itinerant court in the Loire Valley at castles such as Chinon. He was still customarily known as Dauphin, or derisively as King of Borges, after the town where he generally lived. Periodically, he considered flight to the Iberian Peninsula, which would have allowed the English to advance their occupation of France. <inaudible> Maid of Orléans Political conditions in France took a decisive turn in the year 1429 just as the prospects for the Dauphin began to look hopeless. The town of Orléans had been under siege since October 1428. The English regent, the Duke of Bedford, the uncle of Henry VI, was advancing into the Duchy of Bar, ruled by Charles's brother-in-law, René. The French lords and soldiers loyal to Charles were becoming increasingly desperate. Then in the little village of Domremy, on the border of Lorraine and Champagne, a teenage girl named Joan of Arc, French, Jeanne d'Arc, demanded that the garrison commander at Vaucouleurs, Robert de Baudricourt, collect the soldiers and resources necessary to bring her to the Dauphin at Chinon, stating that visions of angels and saints had given her a divine mission. Granted an escort of five veteran soldiers and a letter of referral to Charles by Lord Baudricourt, Joan rode to see Charles at Chinon. She arrived on 23 February 1429, what followed would become famous. When Joan appeared at Chinon, Charles wanted to test her claim to be able to recognize him despite never having seen him, and so he disguised himself as one of his courtiers. He stood in their midst when Joan entered the chamber in which the court was assembled. Joan identified Charles immediately. She bowed low to him and embraced his knees, declaring, God give you a happy life, sweet king. Despite attempts to claim that another man was in fact the king, Charles was eventually forced to admit that he was indeed such. Thereafter Joan referred to him as Dauphin, or Noble Dauphin, until he was crowned in Reims four months later. After a private conversation between the two, Charles later stated that Joan knew secrets about him that he had voiced only in silent prayer to God. Charles became inspired and filled with confidence. After her encounter with Charles in March 1429, Joan of Arc set out to lead the French forces at Orléans. She was aided by skilled commanders such as Étienne de Vinoles, known as La Hire, and Jean Potin de Xantrailles. They compelled the English to lift the siege on 8 May 1429, thus turning the tide of the war. The French won the Battle of Pâté on 18 June, at which the English field army lost about half its troops. 
After pushing further into English and Burgundian controlled territory, Charles was crowned King Charles VII of France in Reims Cathedral on 17 July 1429. Joan was later captured by the Burgundians at the Siege of Compiègne on 24 May 1430. The Burgundians handed her over to their English allies. Tried for heresy by a court composed of pro-English clergy such as Pierre Cochon, who had long served the English occupation government, she was burned at the stake on 30 May 1431. <inaudible> <inaudible> French victory Nearly as important as Joan of Arc in the cause of Charles was the support of the powerful and wealthy family of his wife Marie d'Anjou, particularly his mother-in-law, Queen Yolanda of Aragon. But whatever affection he may have had for his wife, or whatever gratitude he may have felt for the support of her family, the great love of Charles VII's life was his mistress, Agnes Sorrel. Charles VII and Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, then signed the 1435 Treaty of Arras, by which the Burgundian faction rejected their English alliance and became reconciled with Charles VII, just as things were going badly for their English allies. With this accomplishment, Charles attained the essential goal of ensuring that no prince of the blood recognized Henry VI as King of France. Over the following two decades, the French recaptured Paris from the English and eventually recovered all of France with the exception of the northern port of Calais. Close of reign Charles's later years were marked by hostile relations with his heir, Louis, who demanded real power to accompany his position as the Dauphin. Charles consistently refused him. Accordingly, Louis stirred up dissent and fomented plots in attempts to destabilize his father's reign. He quarreled with his father's mistress, Agnes Sorrel, and on one occasion drove her with a bared sword into Charles's bed, according to one source. Eventually, in 1446, after Charles's last son, also named Charles, was born, the king banished the Dauphin to the Dauphiny. The two never met again. Louis thereafter refused the king's demands to return to court, and he eventually fled to the protection of Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, in 1456. In 1458, Charles became ill. A sore on his leg an early symptom, perhaps, of diabetes or another condition refused to heal, and the infection in it caused a serious fever. The king summoned Louis to him from his exile in Burgundy, but the Dauphin refused to come. He employed astrologers to foretell the exact hour of his father's death. The king lingered on for the next two and a half years, increasingly ill, but unwilling to die. During this time he also had to deal with the case of his rebellious vassal John V of Armagnac. Finally, however, there came a point in July 1461 when the king's physicians concluded that Charles would not live past August. Ill and weary, the king became delirious, convinced that he was surrounded by traitors loyal only to his son. Under the pressure of sickness and fever, he went mad. By now another infection in his jaw had caused an abscess in his mouth. The swelling caused by this became so large that, for the last week of his life, Charles was unable to swallow food or water. Although he asked the Dauphin to come to his deathbed, Louis refused, instead waiting at Avesnes, in Burgundy, for his father to die. At Mian sur yevre attended by his younger son, Charles, and aware of his elder son's final betrayal, the king starved to death. He died on the 22nd of July 1461, and was buried, at his request, beside his parents in Saint Denis. Topic. Legacy. Although Charles VII's legacy is far overshadowed by the deeds and eventual martyrdom of Joan of Arc and his early reign was at times marked by indecisiveness and inaction, he was responsible for successes unprecedented in the history of the Kingdom of France. He succeeded in what four generations of his predecessors namely his father Charles VI, his grandfather Charles V, his great-grandfather John II and great-great-grandfather Philip VI failed to do the expulsion of the English and the conclusion of the Hundred Years' War. He had created France's first standing army since Roman times. In The Prince, Niccolò Machiavelli asserts that if his son Louis XI had continued this policy, then the French would have become invincible. Charles VII secured himself against papal power by the pragmatic sanction of Borges. He also established the University of Poitiers in 1432, and his policies brought some economic prosperity to his subjects. Topic: 
Topic: Family. Topic: Children. Charles married his second cousin Marie of Anjou on the 18th of December 1422. They were both great-grandchildren of King John II of France and his first wife Bonne of Bohemia through the male line. They had 14 children. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Mistresses. Agnes Sorel, by whom he had 3 illegitimate daughters. Marie, possibly born the summer of 1444. Charlotte, M. Jacques de Brézé, their son, Louis de Brézé, Seigneur d'Annet, in turn married Diane de Poitiers, herself ultimately a famous royal mistress. Antoinette de Mainlay, cousin of Agnes Sorel. <laughs> <laughs> Ancestors In the arts Appears as Charles, the Dauphin in Jean Anouilly's play The Lark Appears as Charles the Dauphin in George Bernard Shaw's play Saint Joan Appears as the Dauphin in Maxwell Anderson's Joan of Lorraine Appears as a significant character in Thomas Keneally's novel, Blood Red, Sister Rose Appears as the Dauphin in William Shakespeare's Henry VI Part I, and as King Charles in Henry VI Part III. Two Russian operas from the late 19th century portray Charles VII and Agnes Sorrel among the dramatis personae. These are Pyotr Tchaikovsky's The Maid of Orléans and César Quiz the Saracen. Appears as a main character in Giuseppe Verdi's opera Giovanna di Arco 1845. His part is written for a lyric tenor. The libretto is by Temistocle Solera. Charles VII's relationship with Joan of Arc is imagined fancifully in the 1975 Broadway musical Good Time Charlie. Appears as the Dauphin in William Shakespeare's Henry VI Part I, and as King Charles in Henry VI Part III and has been represented in film and television by Raymond Hatton in 1917, Jean de in 1929, Gustav Grungens in 1935, José Ferrer in 1948, Paul Colleen in 1956, Richard Widmark in 1957, Daniel Jolene in 1978, Oleg Kulko in 1993, John Malkovich in 1999 and Neil Patrick Harris in 1999. Topic: <inaudible> Sources. Hannah Walt, Barbara, 1998. The Middle Ages: An Illustrated History. New York: Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-510359-9. Taylor, Aline, 2001. Isabel of Burgundy, the Duchess who played politics in the age of Joan of Arc, 1397–1471. Madison Books. ISBN 1-56833-227-0. References and notes Pernod, R. Klin, M. Joan of Arc, Her Story. Translated by Jeremy Adams. St. Martin's Griffin. ISBN 978-0-312-22730-2. Vale, M. The 1st of October 1974. Charles VII. University of California Press. ISBN 978-0-520-02787-9. Wagner, J. 2006. Encyclopedia of the Hundred Years' War. PDF. Greenwood Press. ISBN 978-0-313-32736-0. Archived PDF from the original on 16 July 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Further reading Lanners, Yvonne July 1998. Charles VII, King of France. Encyclopædia Britannica online. Topic: External links. Beach, C. Ed. 1914. Charles VII, King of France. 
The New Student's Reference Work, 1. Chicago, F. E. Compton & Co. Chisholm, H., ed., 1911. Charles VII (1403–1461), King of France. Encyclopædia Britannica, 11th ed. 5. Cambridge University Press. Lundy, Darrell, ed. Charles VII, Roy de France. The Peerage. 